what am I doing out here in the middle of nowhere? Well, I'm doing what a lot of you enjoy doing as well. Taking in everything that nature has to offer. I'm also busy looking at these natural environments around me, listening to the frogs, watching the water flow, the birds in the trees, and the absolute abundance of growth everywhere you look. But the strange thing is, we don't like or seem to like these environments at home, yet we have this deep craving for these natural environments. I want to just show you some of the things that are going on around nature and then I'm going to take you back home and show you how I am trying to bring natural environments back into the urban landscape so that we can grow with abundance without any use of chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, any of those things, working with nature rather than against it. So let's have a look and see what nature has to offer. Okay, I get it. You must be thinking, what has this got to do with gardening and growing your own food at home? And you're right. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take you from this to this. And I'm going to show you how you can apply these natural environments and principles to your home garden and permaculture food forest setup so that you can maximize what this has to offer within your urban space. So now what we need to do is take everything we just saw and apply it to our urban foodscape, vegetable gardens, whatever you want to call it. I want to use this cauliflower as an example to the benefits of this natural planting environment. First thing you'll notice is these leaves have not been touched. They are, they are in pristine condition. If you've ever grown brassicas, cauliflower, broccoli, kohlrabi, kale, rutabaga, the list goes on, you will know that pretty much every single insect absolutely loves them. This one hasn't been touched. What I did do though is at the beginning of the season I sprayed it once with Bacillus thuringiensis, also known as Bt. I have done a video on that which I'll tag you, which was a really good video looking at the comparison between plants that you do spray and don't. This one was sprayed once. I have found though that if you have a planting of them, you need to spray it multiple times a year because the one application just doesn't work. But this one was sprayed once. What we are looking at though is an isolated cauliflower interplanted with a huge variety of plants. I have another cauliflower over there and I've got another four down at the bottom. We don't eat a lot of cauliflower so I'm not going to plant an entire row of 15 to 20 cauliflowers which then pests can fly over and they can hone in on this beautiful lunch or <laughs> meal that's lined out in front of them. When you plant like this you are confusing the, the bugs that you would usually prey on it. As an example, here's some sage, here's some bolted tatsoi, there's a row of carrots, there's a lot of weeds in between here. There's some Chinese cabbage, some beetroots, um, chilies, nasturtiums, fennel, um, marigolds, there's a tomato coming up there on its own, there's rosemary over there, there's broad beans, kale, these leeks are doing really well. And these leeks, by the way, are completely riddled with weeds in between and they are thriving. So, <laughs> weeds don't take nutrients from the soil. If you think of how photosynthesis works, plants create their above ground mass through photosynthesis, which is energy from the sun. They are not taking all of that from the soil. They are taking some of the nutrients from the soil, yes, 
what they are doing is they are creating significantly more, more biomass through photosynthesis. And when you cut that, you drop it, you are adding significantly more nutrients and biomass to your soil. But if you take all of these weeds and you pull them out, you're pulling the roots, you're taking all of the nutrients they accumulated out. So you are actually removing nutrients from your own garden. The plants are not doing it, you're doing it. If you leave your plants and weeds here, you cut them, drop them, you are adding nutrients back into the soil. And what I want to do is use this cauliflower as an example. It is now ready to harvest. It's, I've got pretty big hands and it's the size of my hand. And what I'm going to do is harvest it, just cutting it at the base. And then putting it up against my face so you can actually see how big it is. It's a really, really si well-sized cauliflower. And as I put it down here, I want to show you, and I'll bring you in close to show you, that it is surrounded by weeds. Here's even a little rogue Cape gooseberry that's come up. I have wild garlic over here, weeds. In essence, there are weeds all around it. There are plants all around it. There are things people say you should never plant near brassicas like fennel it is right next to it look at the size of the head look at the healthy leaves so the moral of the story is rely on nature to do what nature does best that is restore balance control pests grow abundantly with diversity different roots occupying different levels and depths of the soil don't plant an entire bed of cauliflower because then what you say is cauliflowers and brassicas are heavy feeders. They're not. I haven't fertilized this plant at all, not once this whole season. And it is a really big, healthy head of cauliflower. However, if you have a whole bed of them, yes, they will be hungry. If you have one in isolation with everything else, they're all working symbiotically to complement what they're doing. And then just layers of mulch feeding the soil is all that you need to get abundant harvests. So in a nutshell, use nature to your advantage. Bring in as many beneficial insects as you can through plant diversity. Stop doing beds upon beds of the same thing because you are going to have to spray a whole bunch of pesticides or organic things or do whatever you need to do to keep the pests away. You're going to have to feed them. You're going to have to water it a lot because you have so much of the same thing demanding so much. Whereas now they all have different needs and they all work together to get what they need from the soil. So, if you enjoyed this video and you want to get more natural with the way you garden, please subscribe to the channel. Please like this video and share it out. The more people we can get to garden naturally, the better it's going to be for our urban landscapes, and for our biodiversity within urban landscapes, and our ability to create our own food. So until next time, happy growing, and I hope you can bring in as many bugs and insects into your environment as you possibly can.